Hi, this is Janice with Why and Why Not with Janice. I'm your host, um, helping others to reach their goals. One thing we're doing tonight, our topic for tonight is laughter is the best medicine. This is series number two. Um, we interviewed someone else earlier this year, um, a comedian, and now that was a male comedian, now we have a female comedian. I want to see about laughter is the best medicine. Uh, we have today a great comedian. Her name is Mayday Mayhem. Yes. Okay. I um, want to introduce her, and she's going to talk a little bit about herself. Welcome to the show, Mayday. Hi. Thank you. It's great to be here, Janice. Like, okay. I'm so happy to be here. Yay! Yay! Yay. <laughs> so, a little bit about yourself. You're a comedian. Not everyone, they always say there's a room full of comedians. Everyone wants to be a comedian, you know. So, why did you become a, com a com comedian? Comedian. Uh, <laughs> well, I wanted to... I always wanted to bring laughter because it was growing up it just was depressing you know being a child mm -hmm. growing into an adult it's just like Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> so I always wanted to entertain and make mm -hmm. people happy because yes mm -hmm. laughter and happiness is the best medicine right you know if you're feeling down depressed you know everyone has obstacles in life that they go through and mm -hmm. You have that laughter, you know, like they say, laugh to keep from crying. Right, you know? right, right. I've been laughing at school a lot. Girl, <laughs> honey. <laughs> I laugh constantly. So how long have you been doing this? Because I know you've had a different career we'll talk about later. Uh, and yeah. Um, I, I've really been doing this now for close to about three years. This will be coming up on like my third year. Your third year, really? Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Mm. And you like it? I love, I love it. it. Like, I love it. It feels like I've been doing it like my whole life. So doing it all as a child and you decided one day that I'm going to give it a try. What sparked the change that I'm going to give it a try and go in front of a wide audience of people? Well, I never really mm -hmm. had a problem with speaking okay. in front of people because of the prior jobs I had, mm -hmm. you know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it was easy to get up and talk, you know. Okay. I'm a talker, you know. I have no problem with talking. So mm. And you get some laughs, and you know, people say, that made my day, you know? Right. So that's pretty much what got me into it. And also, when I was eight years old, I used to want to be a fan dancer from Showtime at the Apollo. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, used <to> tell, <laughs> I used to tell my mother, I want to be a fan dancer. Hmm. <laughs> so. Cool. Now, getting a little bit into your prior career, and this is why I find it a little comical, because you worked in the military. You were... In the military. Yes. And I just don't see those people being all happy and go lucky, except for Stripes, that movie. <laughs> <laughs> a Top Gun or something like that. Yeah. But, um, well, I did start off as, in high school. Mm -hmm. I was in ROTC because okay. I really wanted to go to the Army. I was gung-ho for the Army. Mm -hmm. When I was 16, I came in first in the city, second in the state for long rifle shooting. Oh, wow. Um, I had a career path to go on to the Army, but I didn't pass the physical because I had cervical dysplasia, which is like cancer cells on my cervix. Mm -hmm. And I was only like 18 when I was okay. diagnosed with this. So when, this is pre-9-11, mm -hmm. so it was kind of harder to get in. I passed the aptitude test, I passed everything. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, your medical came back and, you know, we can't until you get this situation taken care of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then um, two years later, they asked me, do you want to come in? I'm like, oh, I've had two kids, so I, <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. You can bring them with you. No, no, we're going to yeah. stay here. Going to stay here. So um, then I went on to be a, um, a receptionist for a private doctor. I did that for like six and a half years. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Homeland Security. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't see that being funny to Homeland <laughs> Security. <I just> <laughs> <laughs> you will be amazed at the things that you see at an airport. Mm -hmm. um, I worked for TSA. I was a lead when I did lead there. But it was, yet again, that unforeseen shadow that came lurking. Mm -hmm. I was in a car accident 10 years ago. Okay. And I have a C5, C6 disc in my neck. Mm -hmm. And that took my career from Homeland Security. So I'm like, okay. I have to be retired because of the illness that I have. What can I do now? Mm -hmm. And I always like comedy. I'm like, okay, I can get into this. I can, you know, put forth that effort and I love it. Like, 
Have you ever blended in any of your past experience from your jobs? I mean, I, I oh, can't see yes. any of those careers being funny. You're in a doctor's office. That's serious, <laughs> although you need to laugh. Um, TSA, unless someone is really hiding something in particular places, that could be <laughs> funny. Uh, that could be really funny. Um, but I, I don't see those being funny. In the military, you know, shooting a rifle is like, Unless you're Bugs Bunny or, I mean, <laughs> Elmer Fuzz, <laughs> Booth, Rabbit, you know, I guess that could be funny. But other than that, if you weren't them, you know, so do you blend any of that in? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, especially at uh, TSA, we had an ongoing joke that the Vegas flights were the best flights that came in the middle of the night because everyone's getting off of there throwing up into a garbage can. They're drunk. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're highly inebriated. Mm -hmm. So they're just, mm -hmm. you know, laughing at the ground, you know, holler, you know, okay. so we would laugh at, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. And um, the craziest thing that people would try to sneak in, like, mm -hmm. why did you put that lighter in there? And why? Like, well, I want to sneak it in, mm -hmm. but you can actually have this. But now since you tried to sneak it in, I'm taking it, you know, so, <laughs> you know, it's just the craziest things, like, you have a 64 ounce of shampoo to go on a four hour flight. I don't think you're going to need that much shampoo. Right. You know? So it's just little comical things that I will blend in. Well, I always thought even with that, as long as you put in your luggage, and I, will, I can honestly say I'm one of those people that you probably open the luggage or something. And it, I brought back the ketchup and mustard that I got from Vegas. I was okay. not leaving my ketchup and mustard bottle. It was Heinz, and I brought it home. <laughs> but I, there was a note in there. So they actually did scan mm -hmm. it a few times, and they put a note. Mm -hmm. You can buy it at home. <laughs> <laughs> That might have been me. That could have been me. <laughs> but I wasn't leaving my ketchup and mustard bottles I just bought. No, that costs money. <laughs> so you can actually blend this into your routine, I guess. Yes. Okay. But most of my routine uh, amazingly consists of my family life. Your family, because you are a single mom of four, right? Yeah, I have four daughters. Okay. I have two teenagers, uh, a middle schooler, and a preschooler. Okay. So there's 17, 15, 10, and 4. Like, See, like even that, I can't see how you can laugh on that. I think I need to give you <laughs> tissue, you know, <laughs> and a gift certificate for a spa because having four daughters, <sighs> it's it, that's insane. My words exactly. exactly. It is insane having four daughters, four different attitudes, and eight different personalities because all of them have two different personalities. Mm. So it's just wow, but I mm. enjoy them. So the laughter from home, or at least coping with home, blends into your routine. Mm -hmm. So it helps at home and yeah, I to have eventually make money. Plenty of material. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's also therapeutic, mm -hmm. you know, because okay. I find a lot of comedians, you know, they're up there just for the little giggles, but mm -hmm. What's the real depth in it? You know, right. is this real what you're telling? You know, mm -hmm. and some people you can say, oh, no, that's not real. It, it can't be real. Some stories is so real that it can't be false. Like right. my ex who got beat up by ducks, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it, it happened. You know, <laughs> wouldn't no one believe it, but quack marks all over him. It happens, mm. but right. it's true. Or the nine-year-old getting stuck in a folding chair. It, it happened, yes. you know, and it's also the things that parents go through mm -hmm. and that our children bring on to us and we think back at the dumb things we did, like eating right. 15 heads off of Flintstone vitamins, <laughs> you know, so it all blends together. And then not to mention my mother, who okay. is very pivotal in my life because mm -hmm. she's a good support system and she's no better than me or the children. She's just as bad. <laughs> she, okay. I think she's worse. Worse. Comical <laughs> yes. wise or just she can laugh from what laugh from crying. Laugh from her rants mm -hmm. and cause it's hysterical. Oh, and okay. you know, she's seventy and she got that she still got that get up and mm -hmm. she, a lot of my materials from her also. She okay. gives me a lot. Now a lot of comedians, major comedians, are mm -hmm. actually males. Mm hmm And yeah. you see that all the time. How is that for a black female, single mom, mm -hmm. in the comedy world? It's actually, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It really is because 
now we're in the time of um, sex sales. You know, they want you to be a certain frame right. or a certain type or certain dialect, you mm -hmm. know, and it's... And I've seen your comedy. Most of your stuff, almost all of it's clean, so it's mm -hmm. not like you're one of those dirty comics to try to get a laugh. Mm -mm. So right. It's mostly clean. You know, majority of my shows you've seen have been <laughs> <Really>? clean. <laughs> You know, I <laughs> go on the audience, you know. Right. If go I have audience. them ratchet ones, you know, mm, let me tell a little dirty joke. But mm -hmm. most of my material is clean, mm -hmm. you know, and it's universal. Mm -hmm. Like, I actually had a show in Lamont at the VFW, and I was shocked that they was like, oh, my God, that happened to me, too. Okay. I can't believe that you said that, and it sparked the memory. Mm -hmm. And this was a group full of Caucasian people, mm -hmm. you know, and they was like, you're brave for getting up here. Brave, I just want to tell jokes and make you laugh. Right. Like, and a, it's sad that a lot of black women, I don't know if they lack the confidence or mm -hmm. they just pause right. and think, oh, well, I can't do it because I'm a girl. Mm. I can't do it because I'm a single mom. I can't do it because I don't have time. No. Mm -hmm. Anything you put your mind to, you can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no barriers. Right. And I want to try to help break those barriers where, yes, you can be a, anyone and go up here and tell jokes. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, Hispanic, Ecuadorian, it doesn't matter. You right. can get up here and put out your life and make somebody else happy. You know, right. take some of that stress and pressure off of other people. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what I like to do with comedy. It's right. a de-stressor. Everyone needs that ha-ha moment right. to, you know, bring them back to reality. <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> you know, everyone has yeah, that, that moment. moment. You know, where it's just mm -hmm. like nothing's going right, but that joke made me laugh. Right. You know? And so. I guess it also does have to go in having the confidence because when you're out there, you're going to be in front of different variety of segments, mm -hmm. um, different populations, you mm -hmm. know? And you need to learn how to adapt to that population and feel comfortable in front of them, let alone also adapting your jokes to them, mm -hmm. you know. So how, how do you feel about that? It's actually what I'm best at. Mm -hmm. I'm best at adapting. Like I, Improv. Improv. I, oh, I love improv. That's mm -hmm. actually was my first step to okay. coming into stand-up mm -hmm. because when Antoine McKay was the one who taught me improv mm -hmm. at McKay Arts. And when I first met him, I'm like, no, I want to do stand-up. He was like, no, you need to do improv first. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm like, but no, I want to do stand-up. He's like, no, you need to do improv mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. And I got into it, and I actually loved it. And mm -hmm. I'm part of an improv group called Tropical Penguins. <laughs> um, yes, there is a such thing as Tropical, Tropical Penguins. Penguins. They live... Yeah at the equator and they're tropical penguins and they're cute and mm. fuzzy. But <laughs> okay, that's what, you know, I do improv and stand up. It does help mm -hmm. because you have to have improv right. in order to do stand up because you're actually improv with yourself. Okay. So you have to be able to mimic different things or switch gears within a second. And that actually works in regular life too. If you know yep. how to speak on top of your feet, you know, and that's kind of how I met you, too, because I was going to take a class with McKay's studio, and I went on the wrong night. <laughs> Instead of going on the improv night, I went on the stand-up comedy night. <laughs> yes, and you got me. Yes, got you as a teacher. Okay. So, yeah, I guess that's something I really wanted to know was because, like, on the show, I want to be able to, off the top of my mm -hmm. fingers or whatever, <laughs> top of your head, fingers, my toes, head. Yes. neck, whatever. <laughs> but stand up was just it was you were a great teacher. I really enjoyed that. And you are an awesome student. So you also teach, which I just mentioned. Uh, do you like teaching also? Yeah. I like I like it because um you get the opportunity to help people grow mm -hmm. and help people to their full range that they're trying to go. Okay. And then if I can't help you, I can send it to someone else that can help you because it's always going to be levels. Mm -hmm. It doesn't stop with just a teacher. You know, you're going to have more classes, more teachers that are going to teach you more structure or mm -hmm. different types of improv or stand-up, you know, mm -hmm. because there's so many varieties. Okay. You know, so 
it doesn't stop. I want to push people to go further, mm -hmm. you know, so they can do more with their comedy. Mm, okay. And you do that for McKay Studios, mm -hmm, McKay, McKay Arts. Arts. Okay. Now, getting back, switching this back again, uh, you said a lot of your routine comes from your children and your family and your mom. <laughs> How do they feel about that? I think I would be a little bit upset, you know, like, oh, uh, yeah, met that, that again, Mom. Yeah, they'd be mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so that joke about you got stuck in a chair, why do you keep telling mm. it? Because it's funny. It's funny. You know, and then I tell jokes about myself, you know, mm -hmm. like I talked about myself too. Like, right. Did you tell about the vitamins? Yes, I always tell about the vitamins, you mm. know and how my mother beat me recklessly, but <laughs> I was an 80s baby. It was okay. Yeah. Yes, yes. It, it was, was okay. A, I'm okay. I'm, I'm in one piece. I'm all right. So <laughs> it's... And do you still fine. eat those vitamins? Uh, why are you scaring me? <laughs> I told you. And she shook some at me yes. recently. And, that, and that's probably because of you. It's probably why they have those um, safety caps yeah. now because they don't want kids just eating all the heads off of the Flintstone vitamins. Mm -hmm. Except for the purple ones. Except for the purple. Yeah. They yeah. never tasted that good. Oh, oh terrible taste yes. in the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> so is comedy your main job and um, career now? Uh, well, yes, I do comedy. I also do mm. acting. Acting. I do theater acting. Mm. Um, yeah. Now, even with prom. theater acting, I would think, I think when I think of theater acting, I'm thinking of um, just some drama, mm -hmm. something, you know, not comical at all. So how can you switch those two, ha, 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 to, I'm serious. It's all in the mindset, mm -hmm. and it's, what am I here to do today? And I even sneak in a few little jabs when I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. hmm. I still sneak in a few little jokes, but mm -hmm. it's more of what character am I playing? Okay. Like I had a role where I played a mother who lost her son. And I was in the past thinking about my son, not knowing that I had a daughter right here that was pregnant and trying to tell me, you know, and mm -hmm. I, it was a real serious part. Sounds like it. And I, it was no comedy. I had to mm -hmm. be right. right to the book with it. And I had just had to put myself in her perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, she's lost her only son. Right. And she's heartbroken. Even though she has a daughter, mm -hmm. that was her baby. You know, right. she's heartbroken. So I try to tap into heartbroken. Everyone's been heartbroken right. for one form of another. Right. So I just tap into that and so get to it. with your comedy and acting, you can tap and say the same scene and see different viewpoints. Mm -hmm. Yes. So same scenario, that is. Yes. You know, yeah, I won't say there's a... The drama part. Well, I guess it was a drama part. Your daughter with her head in the chair. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It is was. my daughter going to be okay? Is she going to get hurt in this chair? And then the laughing part, my daughter's in a chair. The first instinct that when it happened was, do we have to go to the hospital? Mm -hmm. That was my first instance. And at that time, my 15-year-old was like, no, but you going to get her. And <laughs> I'm hearing the whole time, help. Help me, please. Hmm. I did what any other parent do. I kept watching TV. Like, I didn't even move. Like, <laughs> she will be just fine. <laughs> so. Laughter is the best medicine. Laughter is the best medicine. Now, even with acting, do you find that being a black female, hard for that too? Or even with um, your single mom, having yeah. to juggle all that? Mm -hmm. I mean, I would think being, if you're a comedian, you're at a student, not a studio, but a club, a bar, um, like at eight, nine o'clock at night when you have a little one at home. Mm -hmm. So how are you juggling that and being a single mom? That goes back to my support system, which is my mother and my sister, because yeah, my I have older children, but mm -hmm. I feel it's not their responsibility mm -hmm. to always have to look after the little one, okay. you know? So my mother helps me out, my sister helps me out, my other two children, they help out when they can, but I still want them to enjoy their life, mm -hmm. you know. So usually my mother watches them while I go do my sets at night. I come home, mm -hmm. grab them, kiss them, and go to bed. <laughs> Might punch a couple of them. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and try to make it work and rest when I can mm -hmm. and work straight through when I have to. 
Now, you try different avenues besides the drama and also the comedy. You're also sometimes a guest host on a radio show yes. in Chicago, yes. Fabby Hoffman. Yes, Flabby Hoffman Radio Extravaganza. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it's live streamed from 1 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. every Saturday from coast to coast on Q4radio.org. Mm -hmm. um, and Flabby's awesome. He mm -hmm. lets me come in. We co-host. We tell jokes. Okay. You know, and it's a lighter atmosphere. It's mm -hmm. more of what I do. Okay. Comedy. You know, we tackle topics that might be taboo, but we put the little comedy spin on it. Okay. You know, people don't like to talk about religion or politics, mm -hmm. but Flabby is awesome at doing it because he sneaks in a joke. Okay. Then we have Keegan Buckingham. He's also the other co-host. Mm -hmm. Uh, Miss Jackie, uh, Darren, it's, um, it's awesome. And how does that help you out with, like, um, with your craft, fine-tuning your craft? Exposure. 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 Um, you get introduced to different people, mm -hmm. um, different avenues. Um, I hate saying um, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now, do you recommend people like take classes like you took classes yes, from a case studio? I do highly recommend it because a lot of comedians think that they could just come out there and say, put your pants down, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's, mm. it's actually structure. Mm -hmm. You have to write. You have to be able to, uh, like we spoke about in class, how mm -hmm. to take that beginning, middle, and end and have it blend together. Mm -hmm. Be able to do callbacks from some of your comedy. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm talking about the Flintstones vitamin situation mm -hmm. and then I blend it in with the chair. This okay. is what my kid did. She's not too far from her mother. Mm -hmm. You know, the apple don't fall too far from the tree. She's just like a right. mom, you know. And I do the same thing. I try to blend it okay. all together so you keep the audience interested and okay. they want to go down that road with you and mm -hmm. this radio show keeps me in tune it keeps me on mm -hmm. my feet okay now I know your stage name is Mayday Mayhem mm -hmm. and people can find you on YouTube Facebook and we're actually going to display like um, where they can find you for Instagram and mm -hmm. see some of your clips how did you come up with Mayday <laughs> that's uh, mm -hmm. funny um, because my 15 year old mm -hmm. I was like what should be my name she mm. was like, mm, Mayday. I'm like, hmm, Mayday. And she's like, mm. but you just can't go with Mayday. You got to have something else. I'm like, it's always mayhem around here. And it was like, mayhem. Mm, mayhem. Mm. I'm like, okay, Mayday, mayhem. mayhem. We're going to do it. Cool. And I just spell mayhem mm. differently because okay. there's a lot of mayhems out right. there. Okay. But my 15-year-old actually helped me with that, my oh. ride or die. <laughs> That's cool. And they can see, um, we're going to put it up on the screen several mm -hmm. times. They can actually come and find you. Yes, they can uh, find me for bookings, mm -hmm. um, next show dates. Um, mm -hmm. I have several shows lined up, and you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. On YouTube, I usually talk about more serious topics like okay. depression and, okay. you know, anxiety and mm -hmm. mental illness. And okay. You know how in the community it needs to be recognized more and not just scoffed away. Right. So um, I'm a woman of different crafts. So you have a social side to talk about yeah. social issues with the depression and anxiety. Yes. And they say a lot of the comedians also are um, like even Robin mm -hmm. Williams. Yes. They have depression. They have anxiety. Yes. You know, or drug issues. Yes. And how their comedy comes out is from their anxiety. Yes. Because the, the late mm. Robin Williams, I give him much respect right. because um, he was hurting. Mm -hmm. He was a hurt man, right. and he was so funny. And I can understand <laughs> where he comes from mm -hmm. with it. Like, everyone thinks it's hee hee ha ha, but on the inside, we do have feelings. Right. You know, we do be sad sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, for everyone else, the outside is like, yeah, let's have jokes, but... Mm. Just like anyone else that has a job, they have times when right. their job is depressing or mm -hmm. they just don't feel as good as they should. Right. You know. So how does that affect you? Like we talk about being sad when you're being heckled or an audience, you just gave that big laugh and everything else and there's no laughter. It's like silence. Oh, that's funny to me. <laughs> 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 that's funny to me. Oh, y'all ain't going to laugh today? <laughs> you know, like, ah, you know, you'll right. get them out. 
but um, so you can brush that off. Uh, it's, okay, that's roll off my back. Okay, because I think that's a lot of people's problem. They just can't roll it off, even though you're a comedian mm -hmm. and laughter's the best medicine. They can't roll it off. A lot of people are not gonna like your humor. Mm -hmm. You have like a lot of people that don't like Eddie Murphy humor or right. Red Fox humor or Mom's Mabley humor. I grew up on that. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up wa watching Eddie Murphy raw. You know, right? Like. And a lot of people are like, oh no, how that's offensive. But it's just not your comedy style. Everyone has their different styles, you know. Now, does part of your religions or religious beliefs play into this at all? Uh, yes. Do you and have faith no. in God that He'll protect you and oh, give yes. you this? Oh yes, my Creator, He is going to protect me, my family, and see me in the right path. He didn't lead me down this road for nothing. Mm -hmm. So I have faith that. I'm here for a reason. It's not just static noise. No, I'm here. Okay. He didn't get me this way for nothing. <laughs> like, he better pay up. Like, <laughs> make it rain, Jesus. Make it rain. <laughs> but, but don't forget the 10%. Oh, yeah, I got to tip Jesus because, you know, he died for my sins, so I got to do what I got to do. But I actually grew up Catholic. Yeah. Oh, okay. I went to Catholic school. See, I don't mind find that funny either. <laughs> I mean, and, I mean, and everything is, in your life is nothing seems, everything seems so serious. It, and when you think of Catholic religion, it's downright that's serious. Right. Mm. You're, you're not even supposed to laugh. No, you like Catholic. <laughs> you know? But I grew up Catholic. You're Catholic. And I went to Catholic school. Okay. And come to find out, uh, we're 33% Irish. I'm like, that makes sense. I'm okay. Irish, Catholic mm -hmm. school, all the kids. Yeah. Ah, I like to drink. Makes sense. Oh, okay. <laughs> Makes sense. Mayday mayhem. Makes sense. So um, we only have a few more um, minutes up mm -hmm. on the show, a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any shows come in December? You said you have a show coming up possibly. I have right. a couple of shows coming up in Decem December. Um, I will be in the show on the 12th with my improv sh uh, mates, the Tropical Penguins. You can but find all that on my Instagram and Facebook. Instagram and Facebook. Okay. Um, any one quick advice to give a female that's going to become a comedian? Don't give up. Don't give up. Do not give up. Do not let anyone tell you. You cannot do it. If you got breath in your body, you can do it. Don't okay. let nobody deter you from anything you want to do. Right. That's a good advice for everyone, period. Comedian, doctor, lawyer, everything. Be the best Don't you can up. be. Be the best you can be. Okay. Well, that's it. Today's topic was laughter is the best medicine. Um, I have my guest here. Mayday Mayhem. You can find her on YouTube, clips, um, Facebook, Instagram. She'll talk about um, shows that are coming up. Um, you can even um, hit her up on Facebook mm -hmm. if tips and questions on classes that will be yes. coming up soon or how do I become a comedian, you know? Um, if this joke is funny. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's for, and for booking. <laughs> and for booking. Um, this is Janice with Why and Why Not, helping others to reach their goal. I hope the show was entertaining. Um, you can see us on Channel 19, Tuesday night, 6.30, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Catch us on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you very much, and have a lovely evening, and laugh. <laughs> <laughs>